that's an interesting question, and I think I see where you're heading. Um, and the reason why it is an interesting question is because with our constitution, what we told our MPs and the power they have within the constitution is to exercise oversight. That same oversight is repeated within our Public Finance uh, Management Act. Mm -hmm. So it really doesn't matter <coughs> on what side um, of the divide any of these MPs are. Because at the end of the day, you are representatives of the people, not representatives of your master. Correct. So if um, I were to ask is, um, for example, the, the, the Mweshimiwa that are here, what are people in your own constituency telling you about this particular finance bill? What have they told you? If they've told you it's a good piece of law and they, they want you to continue with it, that's fine. If they've told you to reject and you're a representative of the people, then um, do what is the needful. If you believe that um, passing it is the right way to go, also explain it to them and tell it you know, in a language that they understand. Mm. So at the end of the day, I think we should not be lost into, I belong to this party, I belong to that party. You, for us who are ordinary citizens, we, you all belong to us as a parliament. You, we want to hold you to account, as the Gen Zs are saying, and we want you to represent the people in that particular house. And coming to the Public Finance act, mm -hmm. um, even as they consider the bill <coughs> towards the end, mm -hmm. there are certain expectations. Let me see. Good. So um, while this is, must be 39A of the Public Finance Management Act, is that the National Assembly shall consider and pass the finance bill with or without amendments in mm -hmm. time for it to be presented for assent by the 30th of June. Yeah. Any recommendations by the relevant committee, including um, Honorable Kuria's committee, should take account of the following things. Ensure that the total amount of revenue raised is consistent with the approved fiscal framework. Take into account principles of equity, certainty, and ease of collection. Consider the impact of the proposed changes on the composition of the tax revenue, with reference to both direct and indirect tax. Consider domestic, regional, and international tax trends. Right. Consider the impact on development, investment, employment, and economic growth. Take into account the recommendations of the CS uh, Treasury. And finally, take into account the taxation and other tariff arrangements and obligations that Kenya has ratified, okay. including um, taxation and arrangements, tariff arrangements in the ESC Treaty. So for us, even as they explain it in terms of passing it or not, they should anchor them along these particular principles. I'm assuming one side would be saying, we're looking at the growth of this country and the taxation that has been, and we perhaps believe that this taxation will be counterproductive mm -hmm. in terms of not stimulating development, not stimulating production, and perhaps not providing the opportunities that the youth are looking for. But right. on the other side, you will also hear that we have all these obligations which we have to meet. At the end of the day, and we, this is where I started from, you are exercising this right on behalf of your guys in parliament. Mm -hmm. What have they told you about it? And did you consult them? And consultation, Sami, this is where I want it to. I want it to get to the level where, for example, uh, Honorable Kuria, when he was looking for his votes, <coughs> I'm sure he, he perhaps visited how many homesteads? Many. Uh -huh. And arranged how many barazas? Perhaps very many. Same to uh, Honorable Memusi here and same to Koech. Koech. Koech, uh, to Koech here and also same to, to Sifuna here. Mm. So have they also gone to that level of trying to consult their constituents as to what to do? with this particular finance bill. <laughs> right. I will, I will leave it to them. Oh, OK, 